A blessed Lord's Day to you on this fourth Sunday after Pentecost and Independence Day weekend. Welcome to uh, visitors who have joined us. We pray that your time of worship with us is blessed. Uh, for this occasion of the installation of Pastor Bob Leisty, our intentional interim pastor, uh, and uh, uh, we have uh, certainly a, a guest preacher, uh, our circuit visitor, Pastor Joel Schultz, who will be doing also the rite of installation uh, for this service. Uh, the service itself is Divine Service Setting 4, beginning on page 203 in Lutheran Service Book. Just a couple of announcements. Uh, for this, uh, before this, because we will be having a procession at the end and no announcements there. Uh, that following the service in Concord Hall, we will have the meet and greet reception for Pastor Bob and Luann, and uh, uh, and uh, just some some uh, pastries and and other such things uh, uh, for that uh, that uh, meet and greet, uh, and uh, for that uh, the church office will be closed tomorrow for the holiday. Uh, and um, I will be going on vacation, uh, my, uh, my family and I, uh, starting Wednesday, and we'll be gone for a couple of weeks. Uh, but you are, of course, being put in the uh, capable hands and will remain in the capable hands of Pastor Bob. And then I'll be back too. Uh, so uh, uh, we give thanks to God for this occasion. Uh, our processional hymn is Lift High the Cross, hymn 837. Please rise and face the sanctuary entrance and the cross. <laughs>
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? Since we are gathered to hear God's word, call upon him in prayer and praise and receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in the fellowship of this altar. Let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ, and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty God, have mercy upon us. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ I, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have built your church on the foundation of the apostles and prophets with Christ Jesus himself as the cornerstone. Continue to send your messengers to preserve your people in true peace, that by the preaching of your word, your church may be kept free from all harm and danger. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Old Testament reading for the fourth Sunday after Pentecost is from the prophet Isaiah, the 66th chapter. Rejoice with Jerusalem and be glad for her, all you who love her. Rejoice with her, all you who mourn over her, that you may nurse and be satisfied from her consoling breast, that you may drink deeply with delight from her glorious abundance. For thus says the Lord, Behold, I will extend peace to her like a river, and the glory of the nations like an overflowing stream. And you shall nurse, you shall be carried upon her hip and bounced upon her knees. As one whom his mother comforts, so I will comfort you. You shall be comforted in Jerusalem. You shall see, and your heart shall rejoice. Your bones shall flourish like the grass, and the hand of the Lord shall be known to his servants, and he shall show his indignation against his enemies. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle is from St. Paul's letter to the Galatians, the sixth chapter. Brothers, if anyone is caught in any transgression, you who are spiritual should restore him in a spirit of gentleness. Keep watch on yourself, lest you too be tempted. Bear one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. For if anyone thinks he is something when he is nothing, he deceives himself. But let each one test his own work and then his reason to boast will be in himself alone and not in his neighbor, for each will have to bear his own load. One who has taught the word must share all good things with the one who teaches. Do not be deceived, God is not mocked. 
For whatever one sows, that will he also reap. For the one who sows to his own flesh will from the flesh reap corruption. But the one who sows to the Spirit will from the Spirit reap eternal life. And let us not grow weary of doing good, for in due season we will reap if we do not give up. So then, as we have opportunity, let us do good to everyone, and especially to those who are of the household of faith. But far be it from me to boast, except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by which the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. For neither circumcision counts for anything nor uncircumcision, but a new creation. And as for all who walk by this rule, peace and mercy be upon them and upon the Israel of God. From now on, let no one cause me trouble, for I bear on my body the marks of Jesus. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit, brothers. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 10th chapter. Glory to you, o Lord. After this, the Lord appointed 72 others and sent them on ahead of him, two by two, into every town and place where he himself was about to go. And he said to them, The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore pray earnestly to the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Go your way. Behold, I am sending you out as lambs in the midst of wolves. Carry no money bag, no knapsack, no sandals, and greet no one on the road. Whatever house you enter, first say, Peace be to this house. And if a son of peace is there, your peace will rest upon him. But if not, it will return to you. And remain in the same house, eating and drinking what they provide, for the laborer deserves his wages. Do not go from house to house. Whenever you enter a town and they receive you, eat what is set before you. Heal the sick in it and say to them, The kingdom of God has come near to you. But whenever you enter a town and they do not receive you, go into its streets and say, Even the dust of your town that clings to our feet we wipe off against you. Nevertheless, know this, that the kingdom of God has come near. I tell you, it will be more bearable on that day for Sodom than for that town. Woe to you, Chorazin! Woe to you, Bethsaida! For if the mighty works done in you had been done in Tyre and Sidon, they would have repented long ago, sitting in sackcloth and ashes. But it will be more bearable in the judgment for Tyre and Sidon than for you. And you, Capernaum, will you be exalted to heaven? You shall be brought down to Hades. The one who hears you hears me, and the one who rejects you rejects me, and the one who rejects me rejects him who sent me. The 72 returned with joy, saying, Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name. And he said to them, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Behold, I have given you authority to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall hurt you. Nevertheless, do not rejoice in this, that the spirits are subject to you, but rejoice that your names are written in heaven. This is the gospel of the Lord. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, Maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy 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 Holy
sudden, all of their fears disappeared, and Jesus again says to them, Peace be with you. What a comforting word, isn't it? Peace. Jesus had talked about peace in the upper room before he was betrayed that previous Thursday night. Jesus had said to them, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you, not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. How? 
forgiveness, life, salvation, <coughs> hope, joy, love, peace. Peace with God. God's people are at peace with Him because of the victory of Jesus Christ over sin, death, and the power of the devil. And that brings us to the third anxious moment. Members and visitors gather on Sunday morning or in the pastor's office because they've had a bad week, because they need peace. Reverend Weissie, you will be or have the opportunity to proclaim that peace that comes from Jesus. Some who gather here on Sunday morning won't care about how much you know or how smart you are or how great of a preacher you end up being. They are coming here with the world hanging on their shoulders and they need hope. They need peace. It's been a bad week at the office. It's been a, a bad week in their marriage. They aren't getting along with their kids and their kids aren't real happy with mom and dad. Someone heard the bad news of cancer and had tests and now await what is going to happen. A loved one dies and sadness and grief overtake them. The former district president used to say, you are a dying man preaching to a dying people and you have a message of life. So reminds me, you have a whole lot of peace to share with the people here at Hope Lutheran Church and the world around this place. And they need to hear that God loves them and, and cares for them and that he truly forgives their sins so that they truly have peace with God. Uh, but even with that clear proclamation, it can be hard to believe the words, peace be with you. That is why you must keep giving them Jesus. You must keep giving them the law that shows them their sin. And you have to give them the gospel that shows them what Christ Jesus has done for them as he forgives their sins. Remember Jesus said, receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone their sins, they will forgive them. If you withhold forgiveness from anyone, it is withheld. What an awesome responsibility you will have as their senior pastor. Forgiving them as a man called and ordained by God to speak in the stead and by the command of your Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. You've been doing this long enough that you know it's really actually pretty simple, isn't it? At Holy Baptism, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. Amen. At the Holy Absolution, upon this word of compassion,
himself and you as his as God's people, and then you will hear his promises as he takes up this office as he uh, becomes your pastor. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, through the church's usual order, the Reverend Robert Leiske has been called by the Lord of the church to be senior pastor at Hope Lutheran Church. Let us pray. Almighty God, by your Son, our Savior, you have given, you have always given to you your church and our faithful shepherds to guide and lead your flock. Therefore, we pray, may all pastors diligent to preach your holy word and to administer your means of grace, and grant to your people wisdom to follow in the way that leads to life eternal. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Hear what the Holy Scripture says concerning the institution of the office of the Holy Ministry. <clears throat> Jesus said to them, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I also send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. John 20. Hear also what the Holy Scriptures say concerning the responsibilities of the office of holy ministry. From 1 Timothy chapter 4. Do not neglect the gifts of you have, which was given you by prophecy when the council of elders laid their hands on you. Practice these things, devote yourself to them, so that all may see your progress. Keep a close watch on yourself and on the teaching. Persist in this, for by doing so, you will save both yourself and your hearers. Also from 2 Timothy 4. I charge you in the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who is to judge the living and the dead, and by his appearing and his kingdom, preach the word. Be ready in season and out of season, reprove, rebuke, and exhort with complete patience and teaching. For the time is coming when people will not endure sound teaching, but having itching ears, they will accumulate for themselves teachers to suit their own passions and will turn away from listening to the truth and wander off into myths. As for you, always be sober-minded, endure suffering, do the work of an evangelist, fulfill your ministry. And finally, from 1 Peter chapter 5, Shepherd the flock of God that is among you, exercising oversight, not under compulsion, but willingly, as God would have you, not for shameful gain, but eagerly, not domineering over those in your charge, but being examples to the flock. And when the chief shepherd appears, you will receive the unfading crown of glory. Hear what the Holy Scripture says concerning the strength and promise God gives to those in the office of holy ministry. From 2 Timothy chapter 3. Continue in the things which you have learned and been assured of, knowing from whom you have learned them, and that from childhood you have known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. All Scripture is given by inspiration of God, and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. Dear brethren in Christ, the Lord grant that you receive and keep these words in your heart, so that you may be strengthened and encouraged in your labors. God gathers his church by and around his holy gospel, and thereby also grants it growth and increase according to his good pleasure. That this may be done, he has established the office of the holy ministry into which you have been called by the church and have been ordained and consecrated by prayer and the laying on of hands. It is fitting that you should again acknowledge the responsibilities of this holy office in which you are to serve as senior pastor in this congregation. In the presence of this congregation, I and before the Lord God, to whom you must give an account now and at the last day, I now ask you, do you acknowledge that the Lord has called you through his church into ministry of word and sacrament. 
I do. Do you believe and confess the canonical books of the Old and New Testament to be the inspired word of God and the only infallible rule of faith and practice? Yes, I believe and confess the canonical scriptures to be the inspired word of God and the only infallible rule of faith and practice. Do you believe and confess the three ecumenical creeds, namely the Apostles, the Nicene, and the Athanasian creeds, as faithful testimonies to the true and holy scriptures, and do you reject all the errors which they condemn? Yes, I believe and confess the three ecumenical creeds because they are in accord with the word of God. I also reject all the errors they condemn. Do you confess the unaltered Oxford Confession to be a true exposition of Holy Scripture and a correct exhibition, exhibition of the doctrine of the Evangelical Lutheran Church? And do you confess that the apology of the Oxford Confession, the small and large catechisms of Martin Luther, the small called articles, the treatise on the prime, power and primacy of the Pope, and the formula of Concord, as these are contained in the Book of Concord, are also in agreement with this one scriptural confession. Yes, I make these confessions my own because they are in accord with the Word of God. Do you promise that you will perform the duties of your office in accordance with these confessions, and that all your preaching and teaching and your administration of the sacraments will be in conformity with Holy Scripture and with these confessions? Yes, I promise, with the help of God. Will you faithfully instruct both young and old in the chief articles of the Christian doctrine? Will you forgive the sins of those who repent? And will you promise never to divulge the sins confessed to you? Will you administer faithfully to the sick and the dying? And will you demonstrate to the church a constant and ready ministry centered in the gospel? Will you admonish and encourage the people to a lively confidence in Christ and a living and a holy living? Yes, I will, with the help of God. Finally, will you honor and adorn the office of holy ministry with a holy life? Will you be diligent in the study of holy scriptures and the confessions? And will you be constant in prayer for those under your pastoral care? I will, the Lord helping me through the power and grace of his Holy Spirit. Beloved in the Lord, holy scripture says, Obey your leaders and submit to their authority. They keep watch over you as men who must give an account. Obey them, so that their work will be a joy, not a burden, for that will be of no advantage to you, Hebrews 13. You have heard the solemn promises of him called to be your pastor. Will you receive him, show him that love, honor, and obedience in the Lord that you owe to the shepherd and teacher placed over you by your Lord Jesus Christ? And will you support him by your gifts and pray for him always that in his labors he may retain a cheerful spirit and that his ministry among you may be abundantly blessed? If so, then answer, we will with the help of God. We will with the help of God. Will you honor and uphold your pastor as he serves Christ in all his God-pleasing responsibilities? Will you aid him as he cares for his family? Will you be diligent to put the best instruction on everything, recognizing that love covers a multitude of sins? If so, then answer, we will with the help of God. We will with the help of God. The Almighty and Most Merciful God strengthen and assist you always. Are you then willing and ready to assume this public trust and responsibility? I am. Reverend Robert Lysi, I therefore install you as a senior pastor of Hope Lutheran Church, in the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now may the God of peace, who has brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, the great shepherd of the sheep, by the blood of the eternal covenant, equip you with everything good that you may do his will, working in you that which is pleasing in his sight, through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. We rise for prayer. First of all, God and Father, you have graciously promised that through the preaching of the crucified Christ, those who believe in him will be saved. By your Holy Spirit, grant grace to Reverend Lysby, whom you have given to be senior pastor of Hope Lutheran Church. Grant him readiness and steadfastness in his ministry. 
Let us pray for the whole people of God and for all people according to their needs. Lord, on this, holy, on this holiday weekend, grant safe journey to all who travel. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, grant your healing hand to those who are ill, are ill so that or in recovery or under medical care. We lift up in prayer this day, Aris, Tom, Duck, Dee, Donna, Marie, Susan, Helen, Frank, Stephen, Linda, Bob, Gary, Al, Donna, Glenn, Jamie, and all family and friends, as well as those that we now silently name in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy. Lord of the church, be with us now and bless the ministry of hope that as we begin this time together, it will bear abundant fruit to your glory always. Lord, in your mercy, into your hands, O Lord, we place all for those for whom we pray, pray, trusting in your mercy always. Amen. We will continue with the taking of the offering. Please be seated. We rise and continue on the service of the sacrament found on page 208. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and beneficial that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Everlasting God for the countless blessings you so freely bestow upon us and all creation. Above all, we give thanks for your boundless love shown to us when you sent your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, into our flesh and laid on him our sin, giving him into death that we might not die eternally. Because he has now risen from the dead and lives and reigns to all eternity, 
All who believe in him will overcome sin and death and will rise again to new life. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and singing. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of all creation, for you have had mercy on us and have given your only begotten Son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. In your righteous judgment, you condemned the sin of Adam and Eve who ate the forbidden fruit. You justly barred them and all their children from the tree of life. Yet in your great mercy, you promised salvation by a second Adam, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and made him his cross a life-giving tree for all who trust in him. We give you thanks for the redemption you have prepared for us through Jesus Christ. Grant us your Holy Spirit that we may faithfully eat and drink of the fruits of his cross and receive the blessings of forgiveness, life, and salvation that come to us in his body and blood. Hear us as we pray in his name and as he has taught us our Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he given thanks, he broke and he gave us to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of our Lord be with you always. Amen. Amen.
Let us pray. O God the Father, the fountain source of all goodness, who in loving kindness sent your only begotten Son into the flesh, we thank you that for his sake you have given us pardon and peace in this sacrament. And we ask you not to forsake your children, but always to rule our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit, that we may be enabled constantly to serve you. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Amen. We continue with the, with the closing hymn. Please remain standing.